Hey guys, uh, time for the Monday primer. Uh, just going to wait till everybody filters in. Usually I do these earlier in the day. We're talking about the great, the indispensable Adolph Reed Jr. Somebody that if everybody read, we would be smarter and doing things better across the board. Hey, Kennedy, welcome. Um, hey, how's it going? So, uh, as always, before I do these things, I just, you know, uh, if you could hit us with a super chat, that's super helpful as basically YouTube just continues to F independent news uh, and politics, of course. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, so, hit us with super chats to keep us rolling and going. And of course, we are now about 18 away from our first 3,000 patrons, go to patreon.com slash TMBS. So, Adolph Reed. Everybody check out Kennedy's podcast. Adolph Reed, uh, who I just interviewed, and patrons of Michael Brooks' show already have access to this 50-minute conversation we had. I was amazed by it. Uh, it was an incredible conversation. Adolph Reed is an incredibly smart uh good humored guy. Um, and I just wanted to basically give a little bit of an orientation to his work. We're going to release that interview for everybody on our November 5th show where the guests will be Adolph Reed Jr. and Abby Martin. So, oh, Jamal, I'm honored by that. Thank you. So Adolph Reed has a couple of lines in his work and I want to keep recommending this book, Class Notes, which is posing as politics and other thoughts in the American scene, which in addition to the broader theoretical work, which unfortunately <laughs> is still very relevant today, um, it's a great political and cultural history of the 1990s. Um, so basically, Adolf Reed is really interested in the idea of essentialism and he's interested in contextualizing race in such a way that it's properly understood um, as a historical and economic reality, gender as well. He calls them ascriptive hierarchies. These are um, the systems of oppression, systems of exploitation, which are um, constructed in America, which in this case, in our capitalist history, right? And what he's doing here is really important because there is, of course, racism and white supremacy uh, writ large. But then there is the um, other reality that these things, I really wish Kyle Kalinske had some backup at Politicon. Um, well, maybe I'll get to Politicon one year. I mean, it's possible. So that basically what you need to do is understand that these things are contextually derived from different economic arrangements that manifest how ascriptive hierarchies um, are implemented in different contexts, right? So ascriptive hierarchies and white supremacy is relevant in terms of the abuse of Chinese labor and the railroad system on the West, um, and certainly in the construction of different phases of racial dominance like Jim Crow. Uh, and he goes into the specific and he uses the kind of Marxist analysis to explain how these systems of ascriptive hierarchy are economically uh, dependent and economically entwined using a Marxist methodology. Now, I'll just keep this kind of brief because there's a lot of heavy stuff to get to and you'll learn a lot when we do the interview, um, when we release the interview. But uh Thank you, Josh. But that this also relates to his other argument against essentialism, right? That there is an actual essential truth to race and identity. He definitely sees these things as fundamentally, in fact, constructed, right? So the reality is, is that if they are constructed, um, then there's a political base upon which they can be materially dismantled. Um, and this also leads to his work on neoliberalism and the brokerage industry uh, and the best theories and tactics and strategies 
of how you actually build a broad-based socialist movement, which he has done a huge amount of work on both as an academic, uh, but also as an activist. He attempted to create and formulate a labor party in the 1990s. Um, and he's someone who's gotten things right. I mean, even his writing on Barack Obama as a state senator in 1996 was uh, devastatingly apparent. I just want to read um, briefly uh, from the uh, introduction to this book, which is that this book is built on a commentary of current issues and events in American politics over the most 1990s. As such, is it expresses an ongoing attempt to make sense of contemporary American political life from a critical perspective. Most of the essays published here re- appeared originally and substantially in some form by regular columns uh, in the progressive in the progressive and village voice and similar venues. Writing as the at these venues presents a spe- special challenge to convey complex, perhaps unconventional ideas clearly and concisely to a general audience. And that's, you know, again, that's really what he's doing. Um, He's definitely taking on a lot of very conventional and at this point very cliched liberal thinking in the interest of a broader category and effort of structural liberation across the board. The last thing I'll leave you with, Reed, and this is a really important point, is he said, look, if the only two choices in uh, as in terms of our horizons are proud preaching. Please check out Jewish rapper um, Paul Berman, specifically the song "Power," a take on Robert Greene's "Laws of Power." All right, I'll check it out. Thanks for being a patron. That if the choices are white supremacy, male-dominated capitalism versus multiracial uh, diversity capitalism, of course, anybody with any ethics would pick diversity capitalism. But the reality is, is that in every system of capitalism, you have a mass hoarding of wealth and assets by 1% of the population. And as he says, in a lot of the sort of, uh, you know, neoliberal woke discourses, they're basically just, the goal is, let's have a 1% that is properly constituted in terms of diversity. Now, again, this is the same reason, look, is why I voted for Hillary Clinton and not Donald Trump. If those are the only choices, it's clear which one the choice is. However, we need to have a bigger choice of liberation if we want both planetary survival and justice for the many. Thank you for the Adolf Reed Primer, an intellectual that doesn't get the notoriety he should. We'd love to check out the show at Studio while I'm in New York next month. Uh, if you're a patron, hit me up on Discord. We definitely let uh, people come by and check out the show. Uh, yeah, Adolf Reed Jr. is really indispensable. I hope that uh, what we're doing and maybe some other shows can actually lead to a resurgence of people reading and listening to him because he has – an unbelievable amount of essential and on-point things to say. I will also say um, I'm excited about this uh, Slavoj Žižek uh, primer or Slavoj Žižek interview that's coming out soon. Uh, Same deal. We're going to release it for patrons first uh, at the end of this week and then release it for everybody on the coming days. Yeah, I also just heard, I just want to say, um, no, the Zizek was awesome. I had a great conversation with him. I also, get, I mean, I'll just say here, I, I obviously love, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of Nathan Robinson. We've had on a lot of current affairs writers, um, and they do a lot of really good work. Uh, it hit me up if you need a deal. Uh, but the, uh, the piece that they put out on, um, on, uh, on, on Zizek was awesome awful i mean just just like beneath trash it wasn't even the kind of like maybe nerdy sort of thing you might expect from current affairs of a kind of just aping what chomsky said about zizek it it really went worse than that i'd actually recommend doug lane did a great video at zero books debunking it uh will you play my video of jesse jackson willing to moderate sam cedar crowder uh the majority reporter your show i emailed them i uh, probably definitely not on my show but well let's get make sure it's played at the majority report that sounds hilarious 
Um, yeah, criticism of Zizek. I mean, look, criticism of everybody is fine, but uh, a lot of the criticism of Zizek, uh, I mean, especially in that current affairs piece, has just been like embarrassingly off the mark. Um, Max Blumenthal uh, was apparently arrested and charged, uh, you know, with a fallacious charge with regards to his reporting uh, on Venezuela. And in the same spirit, you know, that it's important to talk about every assault on journalism that's happening in the world today, we need to, uh, you know, have solidarity regardless of what, of anything else uh, with Max. I'm just finding out about that. I'll hopefully uh, talk about that more later, but that's very dangerous and very significant. I wanted to bring that to people's attention. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I also, though, really love in this book, Zizek is just a boneless Lacan. Boo, get the fuck out of here. Zizek is great. How do you see a left focused on uh, class solidarity gain momentum while some thought coming out of the university is still focused on identity politics? Well, again, look, <clears throat> I think the problem is not so-called identity politics per se. Anti-racism anti-sexism, these things are, as Adolf Reed himself says in this great new essay, The Myth of Economic Reductionism, are constituent... Oh, okay, it was a good joke. Fair enough. You're right. Uh, it are constituent pieces of this larger struggle. However, I think specifically what's coming out of the college campuses really is a particular type of kind of uh, at times, the sort of moralistic vampire castle stuff. And I want to always distinguish because there's a lot of really important critiques about the toxicity of the left and moralism and black and white thinking, lack of strategy and alienating uh, discourses and practices for sure. And that's a big problem. Um, but then on the other hand, of course, then, you know, there's the Bill Mars of the world that really do. Uh, want to, as an example, uh, you know, it seems to me from what I've seen him say, like re reject trans rights as an example. Uh, so that's the distinction is critiquing the cultures and the practices, which need to be relentlessly critiqued. Zizek actually has a very good critique of them, uh, which we talk about in this interview. And then you balance it um, with, of course, continuing to anchor the fact that we are anti every single category of a script of hierarchy and oppression. That again goes back to Adolf Reed. Um, and actually, of course, Cornell West speaks on this so well, uh, as well as uh, the Field Sisters, um, for sure. So the critique though, and that's one of the reasons why the Vampire Castle essay is so damn important, is that it gets into the pathology of the cultures on the left which is a real problem and I'm doing my best. And actually tomorrow we're going to do a stream at uh, six o'clock uh, New York city time with Angie speaks, love her channel. Shout out to Angie speaks, shout out to Peter Coffin. Those are some of the more dynamic, interesting channels out there on this kind of realm. And Angie and I are going to be talking, Angie and I are going to be talking about how to build an emotionally intelligent left. My intention is definitely to get Walter Ben Michaels on TMBS Um that's also some incredibly important writing uh, that Walter Ben Michaels has put out as well. Angie Speaks is great, right, Kennedy? Um, so yeah, that's that's the that's the dynamic. And I and you know it's funny. I actually see some people who have some very perceptive critiques about the toxicities on the left, and then they replicate those same practices in their own uh, sphere. And again, going back to the commentary from a couple of weeks ago on Gramsci and counter hegemonic projects, the project is to get out of those practices to actually generate something new. What does it actually mean to be in a restorative space, to be in a solidarity driven space, the complexities and challenges of that? Uh, Encouraging news. Uh, great to see the Fernandez Kirshner win. Of course, tomorrow night on the show, we'll play the clip of um, uh, Fernandez leading uh, his supporters in a Lula Libre chant. It was President Lula's birthday just the other day. Uh, Uruguay is good. I'm glad, of course, they held um, 
in terms of, uh, you know, we're going into a runoff, but I believe it was 40 for the center left block, 40%, 29% for the right. And then there was actually also some really encouraging results in Colombia, including a center left openly lesbian uh, mayor of Bogota, which is really significant and positive practice uh, process uh, progress in Colombia. I, I don't have much thoughts on the Colombian and uh, the uh, Canadian election. I mean, it seems like, you know, look, Trudeau will be back in power. He's got very little credibility. Lock him up. Lock him up. Hell yeah, dude. Um, he has very little credibility. He has very little popular support. Um, I think some people voted strategically. Uh, and, you know, he's going to lead a minority government. I think the conservatives are in bad shape. Uh, they obviously weren't able to capitalize on such a weak uh, leader. But, you know, the NDP, we would have liked if they performed better. Can't wait to see you in Philly. I'm for nationalizing social media companies. How would how would nationalizing social media companies be beneficial? I am for nationalizing social media companies. Please show the soles of your bare feet. No. I think that nationalizing, uh, first of all, can't wait to see you in Philly. And I think that nationalizing uh, social media companies would be enormously beneficial because you're really talking about media companies writ large. It might uh, provide an entirely different basis upon which to protect our data. It would ensure journalism and free speech. It would help go towards protecting our privacy. There's no protection for people's privacy in the private marketplace. These are some, and, and really towards treating these spaces as actual commons and actual democracy laboratories. This Sunday, the illicit history Sunday episode is with Ra Ramesh uh, Siti uh, Srinivasan. Um, and I know I'm butchering that name, but it was a brilliant interview and we went deep into the Silicon Valley economy. Can you do men's rights activist Sam Cedar? That sounds like a very promising character. I know you're a busy dude, but you no, I have not heard anything about that. Um, let me see, Sam. And honestly, like in general, that's that's not my beat. Um, thoughts, uh, Sam, as a men's rights activist, because fathers have no rights in the courts. Do you see? Any uh, any thoughts on Bernie's performance at J Street Perform compared to Warren's answer and Buttigieg's? Well, I didn't see Buttigieg and Warren. I know that Warren and Buttigieg are both horrible on this issue. Sanders is the only one who's shown any political courage, and he continues to. Uh, you know, sure, is my stance well to the left of all of these stances? Sure. But, you know, again, I don't like that kind of dilettantist posturing of what is available, of what is happening in a presidential election. I am stunned and amazed by what Bernie is putting on the table. How do you go about having foreign policy conversations with average people who clearly know nothing about foreign policy or capitalism fuels it? Where to start? I don't know. I mean, I, I actually find that you can talk to a lot of people about, you know, questions or stories that might be in the news. And, and then it just kind of flows organically from there. I mean, it depends who you're talking to and what they're interested in. Inspired by your antics on MR, I made a Beto for Senate ad in which he turns into a dog and fetches a Frisbee. YouTube channel TT Types. I'll check that out. That's hilarious. They killed six children. Lock them up is civil. I completely, one gazillion percent agree with you. Tony Soprano, Marxist impression, please. You got to hit me with the super chat, bro. Pleasure. It's all about exploitation. It's not just oppression. It's about labor as a fucking process. Hey, uh, would you try to get Tom Hartman on the show? He's a real homie to progressives and really tackles uh, Reaganomics. Sure, at some point, uh, that would be fun to have him on. Um, we're booked much more into the future. I do want to have him on. And then, you know, it's obviously my bias also to sometimes like, as an example, another recent uh, upcoming interview is going to be with the Asia Times roving correspondent Pempe Escobar on uh, with a very different, um, you know, global uh, sort of view of pipeline politics, Russia and China and so on. I can't do super chats for my region, but I may take you some Caribbean, some Caribbean rum next month as a pre Thanksgiving gift. Well, I'm honored. Uh, David, 
possibly you could email us at proton mail at, at uh, uh, mjbrooks at protonmail.com. Pepe Escobar is a real name. Any interest in having Toronto's Italian parliament member and Resi supporter Francesca Lamarca on to help explain what the hell is going to happen in Italy? Totally. Send me a message. I think that would be great. I would love to do that. Um, anything else, guys? Definitely check out Class Notes. If you're not yet, become a patron and listen to the Adolf Reed interview. And then when it does drop publicly, uh, definitely share it far and wide. Uh, I'm so inspired by Adolf Reed. Uh, yes, we'll be out to Seattle at some point for sure. Get your tickets to the Philly Live Show, World Cafe. Honestly, guys, we're over two-thirds sold out with still over three weeks left. We will sell out. So if you're thinking of coming, get your tickets stat at Crystal Ball, Artesia Balthra, Emma Viglin. You've mentioned that you personally will take some time to dial for Bernie. I've been dialing as well, and I'd love to hear your advice on making calls. I haven't done it yet, but I absolutely will. And honestly, I guess I would say in my experience of doing those things, don't be totally afraid to go off the script a little bit. Um, you know, that's what I would say. Uh, guys, I appreciate all of you so much. I can't tell you. Get Low Key on Hip Hop Artist from the Ukraine. He's also, I got to check him out. I will check out Low Key. I don't know anything about him, but I'm also got another one. Uh, whose name I'm forgetting, who I'm supposed to check out from the UK as well. I appreciate all of you. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Hit the bell. Let people know about the show. Spread it on YouTube. I was 100 days away. Everybody fold back for Bernie. And make sure in your state you're registered for as a Democrat. That's how you vote for Bernie Sanders. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Click the bell. Let everybody know about the show. Buy your Philly ticket. Lula Livre. Love you guys.